Two unemployed actors, two unemployed actors, they're just between projects. Welcome back to Two Unemployed Actors. I'm Max. I'm Sam. And we've got a great show today. Uh, so much to talk about. Information from uh, q and I did, I finished it just two hours ago with director David Michaud. 7,500 or, or seven. 7500 the new film with, the, jo- the new f- with yes, Joseph film. Gordon-Levitt. Yeah. Nice little review. Oh my God, that was amazing. He reviewed it. Or and you, you, I reviewed it. Have you seen it? I, yes, yes, yes. So it's, much to talk about. Well, it's on Amazon now. It is, it is. I just Amazoned it. Uh, hello to listeners in Encinitas, California. That was a bit of a pause. <laughs> I from can pronounce where? this. From where? From California. Okay. And uh, California. Brisbane in Queensland. Don't forget to subscribe. All the way from Brisbane. All the way from Brisbane. Yeah. Everybody's listening to us all over the world. Well, when I say everybody, I mean, you know, I do round up. He means everybody. Salesman in me. So. What I said real quick was we could make a montage of you saying, this is, we've got a great episode for we've you We've got today. a great episode today. We've got a great episode, great episode. Great I should just have a button saying. where I could just push it. Great episode, great episode. So two hours ago. I just finished a Q and A with two directors, or three if you count the person asking questions. It was through <laughs> Afters on mm. Facebook Live, so free for all and sundry with David Michaud and Mira Fawkes. I actually saw that come up this morning. I was a bit late to the party. And Go. the Afters head of directing, Rowan Woods, was uh, was Interview. asking the questions and facilitating. Very cool. Uh, yes, I managed to slip a question in and get it answered which and? is uh, very exciting and it was a good question. Go on. We'll get to it. <laughs> but uh, basically for those of you for those of you that don't know David Michaud, a uh, fantastic Aussie director. In, in 10 years, okay, he's written and directed four feature films, which I think is I think that's quite a lot when you consider the time it takes to, you know, take it from an idea writing to an it film, yeah. to pre-production to getting everyone on board and Developing. actually getting it developed. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. And one of them being, of course, Animal Kingdom with a lot of uh, great Australian talent that we've known for a long time but really launched them into mm-hmm. Hollywood. Uh, Jackie Weaver moved uh, to yep. LA. She's still there Joel for, after that. Joel Edgerton, Ben Mendelsohn. So some great names that, that came out of... of, of um, <laughs> that came out of that production and launched their careers into mm-hmm. the US, which is... Nice. Uh, nice. Mira Fuchs, uh, Judy and Punch, which I'm going to see soon. Uh, she directed that and is also a, a prolific writer. Now, they're, uh, apart from being partners, uh, a part of Blue Tongue Productions, which is the Edgerton's, uh, look, primarily Nash Edgerton kind of, look, it's in it. Okay, how to explain it? It's like an informal arrangement between a handful of filmmakers. Okay. Uh, if you look at their website, it's got a great, you know, detail on who's who's who in the zoo mm. but nash is kind of like the chief cat herder and has been for 10 odd years or so okay so there's sort of you know they're informally all together they're all uh including joel uh his brother and um and of course uh david and mira and they all look at each other's work look at each other's casting tapes all that sort of stuff mm, cool. and um uh, work together on various things mm-hmm. at various stages of various things, things being films. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so it was a great opportunity to hear a bit more about what's happening from their perspective and how yeah, they approach right. their work. I really enjoyed it. I think probably the – I mean, look, the question I asked, because Animal Kingdom is just an amazing movie. I know it's inspired so many, apart from launching careers, like – like Ozark, you know, the color grading mm. was modeled on um, Animal Kingdom. There's oh, just wasn't it? so many great moments that I find out, oh, yeah, that came from uh, Animal Kingdom. Very you cool. brought up the series I hadn't seen before, mm. which, which have was you filmed seen in, it? I have seen it, uh, filmed in uh, LA and, and, and basically yeah, adaptation of that. The, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Did I you mean, like, like there's just so much come It was all right. It's hard, though, because I was just How much so did you watch? into I watched three episodes. Okay, well, you have to get do. into it more. It gets I very cool. But, uh, but I you can see the relation between I them and especially the, the character of Pope and stuff. Indeed, you can see that. indeed. And look, it was it was really <laughs> good. And the, and the cast it was great. And it's always hard when you've got, you know, cast A and cast B to mm. sort of compare to. Mm. Um, it's like playing a, a character based on a real person. I mean... Yeah, you, you have know, to get it right, don't you? <laughs> you do. And, but then still play it in your, in your way. That was just like a, a, a really amazing movie for me. Uh, Ten years ago... This year, yeah, this year, ten year anniversary. I've nice. uh, out of this 
Q and A. I also got a link to where they talk about. I'll share it on social today when this comes out. Mm. Where uh, the cast reunites, including oh, David, yeah. the director, um, and Joel and Ben and, and Co. and Jackie's there as well to talk about <laughs> the movie. Um, mm. Now that ten years have been, and I guess it'll be interesting to hear from them exactly oh, yeah. how their world's changed. Yeah, wow. Well. As much as to talk about bits and pieces from the movie. So mm-hmm. I've got that on the books. It'll be cool. an hour and a half of, of watching. When's that? When's that? Uh, it's it's happened. You I've got a YouTube link and I'll okay. put it out with the social. That's very cool. I'll flick it to you. It's really it's really interesting. So yeah, so I absolutely love the movie. So my my question was uh, particularly from a writer director: Are you yes. writing with certain actors in mind? Mm. And if so, were they the actors that that were, cast. That, that were actually cast at the end? Good it's question. interesting because. Mira, Mira, not so much. When she writes, it's kind of like I don't want to feel like I'm locked in. Then I'm also disappointed when I can't get that person. Like my whole world sort of, you know, it's mm. like. But then, I really like it when in the casting room, I see all these great actors just give me such different performances. Yeah, right. Things like even for Judy and Punch, she had Damon Merriman, uh, Merriman come back. Uh, three times to audition. She's mm. like, I'm so sorry, mate, but I've just I really got to, you know, blah, blah, to get him over the line with Vice and, and whoever else was producing. But also it's just great to see lots of different actors taking the characters in such different directions. And that for mm. her helps to sort of fill in the canvas of where she thinks it's going to land. Yeah, right. As opposed to um, David, who actually does write with actors in mind. Mm. I suspected he did, but it was great to know. And also he wrote with... Joel Edgerton in mind, Ben Mendelsohn in mind, and Jackie Weaver in mind, yeah, who, three, who, yeah. who signed those characters. And, and isn't that amazing that those three characters are the ones that I think, well, I think it's amazing because I identified those three as the strongest performances. Yes, yes. So it's like, how cool is that to, that be, is to cool. be writing? Were there others he was writing for that, that he didn't get? Don't know, didn't mention it, very diplomatic. But... but um, <laughs> Anyway, so it was, look, it's really interesting how they approach it because he's like, look, I don't, I don't sort of, I don't sort of mind. like I write with that character in mind, but then like my world doesn't fall apart if I can't get the person. It's just helped me to shape mm. that character, and even then, yeah, the right. words on the page can be taken in different directions by different talent. Yeah, okay. As well, well, on the topic of, of Animal Kingdom and David Misha, I was yes. reading Kirsten McGregor in uh, uh, article and interview. Okay. I was reading about that because she cast Animal Kingdom. Yes, indeed. And um, how. They were down to two kids for the kid role. Right. Two very different ones, though. So one, um, like, kind of uh, bigger kind of guy, tougher looking guy um, who would, uh, who actually fit into David Michaud's uh, original script. Like, he thought he suited him most, but he just felt something was a bit off. Right. And then you got the other kid. Who was a bit scrawnier and a bit skinnier and a bit yeah. more shy and all this stuff. And Kirsty McGregor told him to go back, read the script again, with both characters in mind. Yeah. So do it twice with both in mind, both actors in mind. Yep. And then call me. And he called up and he said, "It's the the little kid." And then that was the yep. one. So he wasn't the guy. Wasn't the original choice and the original vision that Dave Michaud had, but ended up being the correct one. So it's interesting, isn't it? And that, yeah. that, that I guess, talks to his point of, look, I write with a character in mind. But yeah. It helps me shape the character, but yeah. it's not like, you know. And I wonder, I wonder why the, the, uh, the guy that suited the script most still felt odd to David Michaud. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I guess, I guess when he had a particular vision mm. that was consistent perhaps throughout the whole thing to really change, it was something. one of the elements that didn't really sort of change, mm. it's hard for him to suddenly at the end to go, well, actually, it could be different. Yeah. And it could still work and yeah. actually different suits it. Yeah, yeah, he, need, he needs some change. Yeah, cool. Well, yeah, so that was cool. Um, other movies, I mean, War Machine with Brad Pitt, Ben Kingsley. I that was a, I, love, I love that movie. That was great. Yeah. On uh, Netflix, The King. The King, I watched, Timely, that's very good. Timothy, Joel Edgerton, blah, blah, blah. So again, from Blue Tongue. Mm-hmm. Uh, and The Rover, which had Guy Pearce and Robert Pattinson. That was the back Rover, in 14, 2014. Yeah, I heard of it. Like a Western sense. dystopian type mm. mm-hmm. deal. So we're talking some decent budgets um, and decent talent. So not bad. I, I was yeah, It was really interesting to, to get two directors for the price of one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and with their different approaches, and mm. and like and Mira going, look, you know, I'm dyslexic. I I, I struggle to spell right, let alone like I'm not your. And she writes. She writes. Yeah, she's yeah. So <laughs> I, I, as a professional actor, I found it hard 
to get lots of work and sometimes you get work that you don't connect with as much and you know some so she was an actor work. first she still okay. is she's a professional actor okay. you can be both you can be a slash you can be both you can be both <laughs> so she's a professional actor a writer and a director very cool and i think what was interesting was just wanting to be to get more work and to be connected and engaged in the industry so much yeah that meant doing more than just acting and and that was the writing and the directing and for her you, she doesn't consider herself a writer. That's the hardest part for her, but also mm. somewhat rewarding, I guess, when you finish just something yes. that you're really happy with. Yeah. Um, no matter what your limitations might have been or you thought thought they were. Sure. So that was really interesting. When when David was was writing Animal Kingdom, he he wrote it like he was writing for someone else to direct. Oh. He didn't even think he'd end up. How did he end that? up? They wanted him to direct it, did they? Yeah. Ah, there we go. Which is which is another little juicy tidbit. I, well, who, I didn't did he, did he I say who he wanted to direct or he didn't? No, no. He just meant that he was writing for something. He just knew he was writing for someone else. Wow. And then all of a sudden, there he is. There we go. Um, and then after Animal Kingdom, like he realised he sort of hadn't been on set for three years. Mm. He just wanted to get something done, walk on to someone else's project. Sure. Just to get on set. Just to, like it's not just I've got to write my baby and direct my baby. Mm-hmm. And that's all I want to do, my babies. Yeah. I love my analogies. Yeah, it's but great. he's he he also <laughs> yeah. you know to get that experience and and to just feel like you're at home on set you know when sure. things things are actually getting done she's sure. getting done. Um, that's when he went and directed uh, Enlightened with Laura Dern. Okay, yes, and you know again like walking onto something that had been running it was set up. Mm. The actors went through the blocking on the first day he was there, and he's kind of like okay that's great, but can we do it this way? And they're like, yeah, sure. Like he just, mm. I guess it was, he was surprised to sort of see that reminded, I guess, that actors are willing to change. Mm, okay. They're not locked on, like they're willing yeah. to experiment and go with the, even if they've been doing certain scenes, certain oh, ways, yeah. which is really nice because he can sort of put his own sort of stamp on it. Very cool. Tell me your story. So, um, Quick little thing. Uh, there was an afters film, a short film uh, that I did with Ramon, who, who's a director that I've done multiple short films with. Right. It's called A Film By. I spoke about it a bit a couple of podcasts by. back. A film, a film by. After sh- uh, <laughs> short film. And it was the one where I did the 50s musical theatre kind of right. yeah, dancing scene. Um, so we were planning to do ADR, uh, kind of recording actually for a song that was in that. Um, before coronavirus shut down. Because that was a while ago. Yeah, that was last yeah, year. Yeah, over a year ago. So it shut down afters. So then now we've moved it to uh, later on in a couple of weeks' time, jumping back into that. So excited. Are they up and running again? I mean, I know I just I did a virtual so. Q&A with them. So I think I think they're up and running or getting back into it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're getting into the recording right. room again. I am like, I can't wait to be back on that. Um, he's the guy who's got short film ideas for me. Which is really cool. I'm excited awesome. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's such a good way to stay work fit, stay sharp, build yeah. up a network of people who Definitely. we're all sort of up and coming. We're all, you know, trying and experimenting. And when you sort of gel with people, yeah. uh, the way they work, their mm-hmm. ideas, it's it's just great. You just yeah. Gotta, well, that's how Blue Tongue started. The 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 company from Nash Edgerton, You know, oh, these guys yeah. just working together and mm-hmm. getting on with each other. Yeah. Also, exciting news. Not today. The big short film I did. Yes. Is now finally. In uh, audio, it's ready to. It's the the audio what? is now onto it. Oh, oh, you mean it's that? Pro- I thought I thought it's going to some festival called Audio. No, uh, no, no, no. It's, or, it's, audio only at a festival. <laughs> That'd be interesting. At a film no, festival. so sound is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, close your eyes and listen to this. Yes, <laughs> finally, our yeah, that would be a very odd. <laughs> it would. Uh, and think about it. No, so our our sound guy Ahmed is now on it, editing the, in the sound, the visual effects go are all done. Everything's go Ahmed. Get Do- it dial done. Dial up Sam's level. So excited. Um, so hopefully that is done soon and I cannot wait to see it. Um, That's good because I remember you worked on that for a while up in the Blue Mountains and down in Five days, yeah. and it was intensely was emotional intense. journey. Thank you. Quote, Just unquote. Just listening quote, to your unquote. stories. Yeah, yeah thanks. But, thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks for actually listening. That makes one of us. <laughs> I listened and I understood. Oh, so, good. Wow. Jesus. And I remembered. My oh, God. Who is this? The hat trick. What have you done with Max? Oh, sh- Okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and um, so we also there was a McGregor casting for a mm-hmm. uh, TV series in Byron Bay. Um, yes. Pretty sure I know the name. Don't know if I'm allowed to like 
say it. I don't because I'm not meant to. Know. If you're I don't not know. sure, stay quiet. That's mine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But uh, so Jess and I were going to audition that with uh, audition for that with Grant, and we arrived at Grant's last week, and I rechecked the website, and they are no yes. longer casting it uh, for whatever reason, whether it's been passed on to another casting agent or they've cancelled the show, um, been delayed or something. I mean, it's yeah, a strange environment yeah. we're in at the moment with Corona World. Yeah. Um, but maybe we, there's a delay as a result of that. Who knows? Exactly. But we did it anyway. We did our self tapes. They were pretty good. Good, uh, good and um, sent them off because they they said even if you've done your self tape, send it to us for future yeah. Yeah. projects. So we did that, and that's good. Um, it is good because I mean, because now they can see us. Rain, hail, or shine. You've got yourself again in front of a yeah. uh, casting director. And my like, YouTube has okay. three views that YouTube video. So. And one of them is probably. Three of them, sorry, me. McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You, so, your mum, Jess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So getting back into it very, very slowly, but 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 getting there. Mm, you look like you had something say. really important to say as well. And I was Did you just it. have a brain fart and forget? No, or probably just like I was watching something? I was watching a TV show. It's called The Originals and I uh, got to season four finale. I've heard that. Yeah, I got to season four finale and like bawled my eyes out. Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, well, like Jess was asleep. It's and like I was when you finish an audition like, that was really draining or something, and you're just so in touch with your emotions, yeah. and like you know, the wind changes direction. Yes. It's like, oh my god! Oh yes. <laughs> oh, also, yes. So I'm learning a monologue for Grant's to on Thursday. He's given me this monologue. It's about a father who has accidentally, however long ago, that's my choice, but has accidentally reversed into his two-year-old daughter. Oh. Dear. Um, and I, I suppose, killed her accidentally. And it's such an emotional monologue. And I'm like, it's, I, it's going to be a challenge. And it, it has been a challenge. But I'm trying to dial, not trying, you know, I'm just trying to be in the moment and be present yeah. and dialing up those emotions where I don't actually have a daughter and I don't know that relationship, but I can pull from others at the same time. Here's Substitute the, your dog, Bella. But here's the problem, right? If it uh, for me, like I do my best. It's so hard to. I, I guess that's acting for you, but it's really hard to. I can get upset by thinking about that stuff. I can. Yep. I can even get teary, but to bring a tear to like fall out of my eye. Yeah. That is so hard. And I can't No, I'm, I'm, I'm to, in the same boat. Yeah. I, and and it, you got to have, it's real crying. you got to have the heaviness in the your throat. And, the, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's weird. Like I can think about Bella or, or even my, my younger cousin who's, mm -hmm. who's amazing. And it's an awful, it would be an awful thought to substitute her and, and would work to upset me. But for some reason I'm like, but I know she's safe. Mm -hmm. I know. And it's hard to bring, all that out. It's it just, is. It's, and, and, it's and sometimes what works today skill. doesn't work the next, exactly. the next day or the next take. I, I know Jeffrey pull. Rush did, yeah. um, for King Lear, he was visualising his daughter hit by a bus. Oh, brilliant. To bring that emotion up. See, there we go. Like, I think having a kid is something, a relationship and some sort of love that is unknown to people without. Possibly. That's what people Frederick say. feels like a child. He certainly acts like one, but then so do I. So yeah. it's hard to sort of tell us. But oh, <laughs> no barking today because Frederick oh, almost said he's no longer with us, but he's not with us today. Oh, That's no. Wow, that was a bit heavy. That's he's he's at now. doggy daycare, everyone. Don't panic. Don't panic. Uh, he pulled up on the Vespa right out front. I was arrived confused. in style. I was confused when I walked in. Walked Ooh. in, there was no barking. I thought I was in the wrong wrong place. <laughs> I saw Max. I he's still thought I was always happy to see you, but for some reason is quiet. Lets us talk. It's weird. No, it's, it feels like part of us is missing. He's not here. I know. It's a bit strange, isn't it? it I do miss the little guy. After a couple of hours, I'm like, oh, Fred's on. When, when are you thinking about? Uh, as soon as I finish talking. So I'll be so never. best bring around. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I wrap up the podcast episode. Oh, I'll there be we go. That's a bit more specific. Heading around on the Vespa and picking up good old Freddie. I Does can it, almost, almost ride into the actual doggy daycare centre. Do you put the dog goggles on him? No, he doesn't use the doggles yet. We're getting the there. Doggles. He wears them to the Vespa, but won't wear them on the Vespa at the moment. We're getting that's closer. That's freaking pointless. First step. Well, it, it's a process. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've got to work with his attitude and his fashion sense. Oh so, God. you know, it takes a while. Very nice. So you um, needed some more concentration time today. Is that why it's yes, doggy daycare? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he, he, <laughs> he misses his friends. It's been a while. Aww. We've been together, two two guys in each other's pockets throughout the pando, like the full <laughs> pandemic. It's a lot. We need a day apart. We do. It's time before yeah, we start yeah, barking at each other just for no reason. Yeah, you know, it's just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but speaking yeah. of being available, uh, not just for Fred's emotions, but my own. Because 20 years of corporate, I'm hiding every emotion I've got. And I think, you know, it, it was really hard. like the. I think when it was 
really apparent to me that it was going to be quite difficult mm. in an Anthony Brandon Wong workshop and just trying yes. to draw. And, but it's not always, you know, the, the waterworks. It's also that transition to that state. True. Uh, which, is, which can be quite an intense and gripping mm. as much as the... Yeah, the, not, the not getting them waterfall. out is, is a way to get... You, could, you can make audiences cry without you crying because yeah. they can see it building up and the release is, are the tears. And if you don't release, they're going to release for you. I've heard that before. Um, and, and then they'll start crying. And also, yeah, I have heard before, you know, you can't just make tears come out and you seem sad. There's emotions to those tears as well, and that's why I guess it, yeah, you can do. It's like the fake smiling, you know. And you, it's not, you don't see it in the eyes. It's just oh, that's creepy. <laughs> don't don't do that. Don't don't do that. If the wind changed and it stayed that way, the wind you have problems. But uh, problems. I think I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you can you can you can sense it. So just you know, squirting a bit of onion in your eye and uh, water coming down doesn't mm. really. It's no, you've got to be in the right um. emotional area. Mindset. That's my technical mindset. mindset. Even that's a good area to be in, uh, especially <laughs> when you're acting. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the God. right mindset, yeah, and different things to drag you into that mindset. That's why I like full respect in the theatre world. We're doing like eight shows a day, and you got to have a have an emotional moment. You got to cry mm. or whatever, you know, whatever it might be. I mean, the where front, the you, f- you find a bit more challenging to get into that mindset than other areas. But I mean, the front two rows are the only ones that see your tears anyway. So. Yeah, well. <laughs> 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 oh, well done. The sweat zone. Well, actually, I remember waiting for Gotto with uh, Hugo Weaving and Richard Roxburgh. You waited for I him. was in row with two. No, and sorry. they're sitting there on the edge of the stage, their legs hanging over. There was no one in, in the first row. And it's like they're just there and, oh, my God, they're just going for it. And it was just amazing. Like, I'm I'm, I'm sitting there just looking up at them going, this is so cool until I realise, you know, they're just they're lots, of, lots of spray. It's like a sprinkler. Hugo Weaving is like a sprinkler. Was spit or crying? He didn't really no spitting. Yeah, he didn't really make it to the second row, but you know, the, with the lighting and everything, it was quite powerful. <laughs> but uh, but Jesus, it was a fantastic play. Oh, that was amazing. That's one of my one of my highlights up there with Hamlet. Um, ah. One of my highlights. So you're from in, the you're future, in, uh, there you are like many. The there are many. So to make it to the uh, the, the a, a to the to, to the, the top to of the, the podium the, is quite the, special. Very nice. I'm sure Hugo is thanking thanking me for that right now. Seventy five hundred seven five zero zero. It is seven five seven five zero zero seven five zero zero. Yes, don't really code. Say it's code word. And what is it? Code word everyone for? is going to read. It is the it. emergency code for a plane hijacking. Ah. Well, now all the terrorists know, because the idea is no. they, they being pilots, uh, <laughs> we can. <laughs> and I'm now, really and, today. and now everyone I've else who watches the film articulating them. Yeah, which yeah. is a problem when you're articulating things. So. Uh, Oh my god! What? <laughs> I know that made sense to only me, and even even then, I'm kind of like Why? and action. Pilots, <laughs> pilots, if they want to communicate surreptitiously on yes. the sly on the down low, if they want to say we're being hijacked without actually saying those words, they can just put in a, a code, you know, seven five zero zero, and everyone will know. Everyone being the traffic control will know if they're being hijacked. Except for those terrorists who've watched the movie now or listen to this podcast. It's shorter to say there's a hijacking than 7500. Yeah, but that's not the point. The point <laughs> is you don't want the hijackers to know you're telling everyone. What if it's like a rush? Oh, my gosh. It's going to take a lot of time. What if it's a rush? Review. There are more syllables in 7500. So it was filmed in December hijacking. in Germany. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's in it. I yeah, saw the yeah, trailer. Great. His acting, even in the trailer, is freaking amazing. Like it's interesting, he's like, isn't it? Because the, the, it's very cool, the relationship between him and... I, I'm guessing it's his wife or girlfriend or partner. Wife. Did, I'm sure I brought this up last podcast, 7500. I'm sure I forgot. Not Maybe. I don't know. I did. Did you? Yeah. I was listening to you. Yeah. Did I, was I making eye contact? Were you listening to the podcast? Was I making eye contact? <laughs> was I like responding or was I just sort of, was I drooling? I think I said I saw the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, were you drooling? <laughs> Written and directed by Patrick Volroth. Now, I... I of course. Sorry. Why of course? <laughs> no, I was kidding. I don't oh, know who it is. I don't know. <laughs> so, what, what I found really interesting was in research, mm. um, Patrick would would go back and make amendments to the script and use different okay. elements, like discovering that there's a monitor behind the pilots that can see what's going on just outside the cockpit door. And that's, that's in every passenger plane, is it, now? 
I have no idea, but, but um, <laughs> I, 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 it is in the Airbus because I actually bought one. They okay. bought a decommissioned one. Oh, very cool. And used the cockpit of the plane and the first eight rows. Oh, yeah. I, interestingly, like, I mean, that's not a lot of space. So, But it all happens on the plane, right? This film is all on yes, the plane, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And interestingly, which makes it feel really claustrophobic. Mm. And because you're so drawn in, and so, and it's the tension is 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 there, uh, it, and it is such a confined space. It's really interesting. But technically, it is a confined space. So there's no boom operator. That does, what they did was they put lots of mics everywhere. Oh, um, well, it would have been easy if they don't change location. That's perfect. Well, yeah, and then the, but then they just had to m- sort of make it flexible somewhat so they can fit. And they used one of the smallest. I can't remember what the camera's called. I'm not much of a tech guy, but but they used one of the smallest cinema tr- cinema cameras available okay. in order to help oh. a deal with the space. Yeah, uh, but obviously, with some flexibility, to move things around to get in and, and, and out, sort of thing. Because it's just it was it's fascinating the way you feel like you are in that cabin. Yeah, right. Locked in there, wondering what the hell's going on, and that's where that monitor is great because some of the most tense moments uh, where you're uh, on the edge monitor? of your seat is when you're looking at what's happening like you're the pilot so it's always from joseph gordon levitt's perspective no it's not no or but it's from the cabin perspective okay so there's not a lot of moments where you're outside the cabin as in the, the so that the, makes the cabin, it really okay. interesting the cockpit or the cabin the cabin well it's the same, it's the same thing. thing sorry i don't freaking know plane i don't lingo. i don't fly and i'm <laughs> it's really simple i don't know why i have to make complicated <laughs> and, and, and i got it but, I got but it. i've got it out uh what what <laughs> what's really interesting too is the is the routineness the the calm routineness of just the pilots going through their checklists and and, and mm. going through the motions uh, look i'm kind of interested in flying so it's kind of interesting to me but but oh, it fine. just all of a sudden to be thrown into an extraordinary tense situation yeah just makes it even more uh, intense of a moment. Yeah, right. And that doesn't let up. Like, it's just consistent tense from then on. And I want to watch it tonight. It's fantastic. Oh, it's so worth it. Fantastic ride. Um, <laughs> Pun intended. Yeah, fantastic flight. Yeah. What, what's interesting, too, is a fairly loose script. So what, he, what Patrick said is don't feel like you have to say every single word on the... A lot of... And how often do you hear a writer say that? Not often. Uh, don't feel like you're tied into every single word. Like, if you're feeling the emotion, you feel like you should say something, say it. Yeah, right. And then Ad-lib. there was a sequence of probably 45 minutes where they would just start and go all the way through. Wow. And just do that again and again to capture the different angles and different, different ways to capture the scene. Yeah, right. Exactly. And, and just to make it a bit more authentic. Cool. And the research both Joseph and Patrick did into this is just, it's amazing. Like you can see when they're going through the checklist, like how routine it is. I mean, it's like any other, any other flight, you could absolutely see it happening. Oh, that's so and cool. feedback already from people who do know how to fly. It is really um, authentic. I guess it helps when they film it in an actual plane. plane it's not yeah. like on a soundstage. It's a real plane. Yeah. Um, right. But so like yeah, snakes great, on a plane. great thriller to, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <laughs> it's a great thriller to the end and I always love those stories where you've got some you know ordinary people in really extraordinary situations yeah and you just you can feel that and feel Joseph like gordon Levitt's oh. awesome he's awesome what an amazing actor like and so versatile like one minute it's uh third rock then it's t- uh, 10 things I hate about you was another one of mm. what he's I mean just like all uh-huh. of, and now he's a Ge- um, American in Germany yeah. flying planes with, yeah, right. uh, with a German wife. It's, well, it's really I, interesting. I watched a TED talk from him actually recently oh, and oh. it was quite good. He, he was talk. talking about, um, I forgot, but uh, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so good you've blocked well, it from no, your he, mind. He was, he was talking about acting. traumatic. Yeah, he was talking about acting and the, and the work <laughs> and, and also trying to, I, I guess, stay stay you and true to yourself as well, right. even when the fame comes and oh, all that okay. stuff. And he, so he was, he was ch- chatting about that. Um, it was weird seeing him speaking to an audience as himself because you don't see that often with... No. Um, besides accepting awards. Not many actors do TED Talks. No. They'll probably turn up and ask for a check. Yeah. Ask for a chair. A check. To, oh, a check. They get paid to talk as actors. Yeah. yeah. Well, Adam Driver did one. It's a, there's quite a few, actually, I think. Is but. There? No. I don't, before Ted, Ted was a thing, <laughs> before Teddy came around, it was just people making speeches, really. Yeah, Ted's great. <laughs> <laughs> the corporates love it because they can sound like they're the next, you know, Steve Jobs or something. Big thing, Walking yeah. around on stage with the yeah. little microphone and people have to listen to them. Okay. But you can say you're a part of it, you know. 
You've been listening to Max and Sam on Two Unemployed Actors. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next week. See you guys. Bye. Two Unemployed Actors.